Hey, what's going on? E is in the Abelard, and this is the next video in creating a bathroom in Unity 3D. So if you've been following our series, you'll actually know there's been quite a few updates or remodels that we've done in our bathroom. So first and foremost, our shower. We changed our, the look and feel of our shower. We've also added uh, just a few more resources, shall I say. You have two cabinets now that you can store um, anything pretty much in. We have a tissue box, which you can see some nice detail in. Uh, we have a lotion bottle. We've also added just a little more life, added three paintings in here. Um, all of these were actually uh, painted by me in Painter, which occasionally I love going back to you know, some of those those older grown roots of just creating art for art's sake. And that's why all three of these pieces were. With this one being my most uh, cherished and my favorite one, uh, it's an abstract painting, but if you look close enough, you can definitely see there's so much going. There's a lot of emotion within this painting. And, uh, you know, definitely something that you know I'm, I'm definitely really happy about. Came out really nice. And actually, speaking of nice, this was actually... Um, put together in Substance Designer. So as you can see here, this is at 512. We can actually increase the quality. And this is you know, one of those things about Substance Designer that I absolutely love. You, know, you can easily just change the quality without worrying about you know, the, the size, the output, re-rendering anything. So you can just keep going up. I um, also have quite a few uh, passes in here as well. But we'll leave this at 512 for now. And that was, that's another update that we did. You'll see there's actually a substance for probably 90% of our actual room. And the reason for that is, is a substance is a great tool in, in a, a huge addition in our workflow. It makes things so much easier to manage as well as controlling the size of your actual texture in the end. So the tiles were done in substance, both the floor, the, the actual room um, was done in substance. Uh, which is a huge benefit because let me just a quick plug for substance you'll see we actually have a main color here we can if we wanted to we can change this to another color a red maybe a blue so this is this is the power of substance and this is why you know i absolutely absolutely love substance designer it just gives us that kind of flow so let's go ahead and just Put this back to a decent color. All right. So what we want to work on today really is, is we want to focus on this system. We want to focus on our, our sync system. And what we want to do is, is we want for when you click on either the hot or the cold water, we want that to play an animation so we know that the faucet was turned. And then we, we want to see the actual particles come down. Now, part of these particles coming down is, is controlling them, which uh, is a little more in depth, but I'll, I'll, I'll show you a sneak peek on how you can control particles really easily, uh, just using, you know, just as long as your code is set up for it. So let's take a look at this bad boy. So what you'll notice is I've already added the animations just to speed things up a little bit. And we have the capsule collider because you need some kind of collider to, uh, to be able to, to receive the mouse event. Uh, we have a script already in here, so pretty much we're, we're set up. You click on uh, on the animation tab, and we have the hot water on, which simply goes from zero to thirty five in the z axis, and we have the hot water, which is the inverse. So that's pretty much it. That's our setup, and we can just jump right into this now. So this is what our script looks like. Um, very simple. We have a public variable is running set to false, and because the water is not running, we have a private variable anim, which is just going to be a call to our animation. So I'm just going to set up anim is equal to this dot animation, and mouse down. What we want to do basically is we need to know you're either on or you're off. So we're going to just throw together a quick if statement if we're not running so is running is set to false which it currently is we want to play animation 
on. Else or otherwise, we want to play animation off. Now, we can throw this, which we will throw, you know, some more things into the mix. So we're going to keep this here. And the reason for that is, is in a lot of these videos, you notice that I actually separate a lot of the functionality from the logic. And the reason for that is we want to sometimes be able to control the flow of information. And whether you're programming in Unity, JavaScript, Node.js, uh, you know, Corona with Lua, you want to be able to control the flow of information so that if we want two things to happen here, we can do it in here instead of having it in a separate location. Um, so this play animation, we want to know what to play. So we can throw a string in here and tell it, uh, you know, when you're playing this animation to anim dot blend. And we'll, we'll just say S. And this simply just does one thing and one thing only controls our animation. So what we're going to do now is, is we're going to make our animation play, play anim. And we know this is going to be uh, sync, oops, hot on, and sync hot off. Then at the end of this, what we want to do is we don't want this to become a, a loop that, that never changes. So what we're going to do is, is at the end of all of this changing, we want to set this to the negative of what it currently is. And so basically what's happening here is, is I'm saying you clicked. So obviously you want to play the animation. Which animation do we play? We choose which one to play. And then afterwards, at once everything's all said and done, flip it. And, and what, what that basically allows for is, is the next time you come and you click on, on, our, uh, on our sync handle, it's going to then do the opposite. So in our case, it's going to turn it off. So we're just going to hit play real quick. Let this thing load up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know, I know. You don't like that. <laughs> Um, let's data type this to a string. You know, there you go. Now, this definitely isn't going to be a full blown course on the reason why that happened and the importance of data typing, but. It's, it, it does end up playing a huge performance role later on. But let's just hit play and see what, how this thing is working. Now, sometimes this might take a lot longer to roll. And the reason for that is we have substance designer in, um, involved in this. So sometimes these substances take just a little bit of time to, uh, to compile. But you can hear, we still have the beautiful sounds in here. Which I don't know if I showed you the pocket door, but we have our pocket door running. Well, there you go. So I just have to increase the collider on that bad boy. And we hit this. Turns on and turns off. Real simple. Now you notice there's a little hiccup that was going on in here. And I left this on purpose. And the reason for that is, is our animation is just not running at the right clip at or oh, it's not running the right clip at the right time excuse me and the reason for that is we have our initial state to off so what happens is is uh, when when you play the animation it's actually looking for for it to be on first so it just it, it's a slight bl um, blending so just by changing our logic we'll be able to uh, fix that but here you go now you can see it importing our assets from substance this might take a little bit to do because I have quite a few of them in there, but this actually brings us to something else. You can see there's a little debugging going on over here. Actually, there's a lot of debugging going on. <laughs> and what you're seeing is basically covering something that, that may happen in a game, which you have to be very mindful of, and that's just distance. So what I'm going to show you now is the reason why I have that distance up. 
And when you come through this room, you'll notice that you can't click on the glass door and open it from here. You have to be within a certain distance to be able to do that. Well, it's not the same with this. As you can see, you can click on this from anywhere. So what we're going to need to do is to figure out what the distance is from the actual player to this object to see what is going on. All right, so as you can see, our animation works and that's all we want to cover for this video and what we're going to do now in the next video is, is we're going to create our particle system but what we're also going to really focus on is now doing more of a controlled system and what's going to now happen is, is we want to control the particles but we want to make sure that it's more of a triangle effect and by triangle I mean if this turns on and this turns on, we need the water to flow a lot more than if it was just with one of them. So our particle system is really going to be, in this case, is going to be a nice controller for, uh, for how things are going to flow. So, to the next video, Edison, I'm out.